support for Wellering Arts, and this is an FAQ video. Way! They're a little bit new. I thought I could do more of these. Should be fun, hey? In this video, I'm answering a question by Jody that I think might also be applicable to many other beginning artists who have heavy inner critics and almost like have a fear of creating art. If that sounds like you, keep on listening. I have some helpful tips on how to deal with the dreaded inner critic. First, let me share Jody's question with you. She gave me permission to share. She said, Hi Tam, I have been contemplating joining Lifehook 2021 for a while now and would so love to join. The caliber and exquisite artwork by the teachers, however, has slightly put me off, not in a bad way. I feel I wouldn't be adequate enough to carry out the lessons. I have just received your Ever After book and so far I've just been reading through it as it scares me a little to start. Mm -hmm. I noticed in the taster sessions that we did a lot of people and this is the area I want to go into. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do any as I was too scared to start. How do you overcome this feeling? One where it leaves me sick in the stomach. I love to create and do create on most days, but my inner critic is so bad. Can you help me? Cheers, Jody. Thanks so much for submitting this question, Jody. And I have to apologize for um, it's taking me such a long time to reply. It's been crazy busy over here and I really wanted to take my time to reply to you properly. So thanks for your patience. <laughs> Secondly, I really want you to know that you are not alone in feeling this way. Many beginning and established artists feel fear and anxiety when it comes to creating. So these are normal feelings to experience. Here are some thoughts on your question and how to deal with the fear of making art from my perspective. Number one, we often feel fear to create art because we are attached to creating a particular outcome. So it's perfectly normal to want to create beautiful masterpieces of art that you are immediately happy with. Of course, we all want to do that, right? But if we don't allow ourselves to make art we don't like, we're going to be experiencing extreme pressure and a fear of failing. It's really important to develop something that I like to call the courage to fail or creative courage. Artists are all, are all on a journey and all artists are at different sort of phases of their journeys. If you're only just beginning, you kind of have to accept and be cool with the fact that you're learning and may not make art that you like straight away. It's really, really important to be okay with that. This is a hard phase to be in, but it is an unavoidable phase. You need to cultivate creative courage and resilience here and remind yourself that you are learning and growing. Making art you don't like is normal, necessary and needed as part of your process and progress towards making art that you do like. I know it can be really painful to make art that we don't like and that's why I think it's really important that we hone in, hone in on that specific feeling and um, and really learn how to deal with that feeling of not liking what we create. And if we can accept the fact that we might make art that we don't like and that it's a simple part and a, and a, and a necessary and important part of our process and progress, then you allow yourself to make art without the fear of the outcome of what, what it will, is going to look like. And that is, is, a, is a great skill to develop in order to move beyond the fear of what the outcome will be. Number two, connected to this is I encourage you to let go of focusing on the outcome as we just discussed and focus more on the actual creative process and the enjoyment of exploring art supplies and developing your skills, seeing how the paint drips, all these kinds of things. Try to let go of the outcome and focus on how fun it is to create. If you take on more of a, I'm just exploring, having fun approach, you put much less pressure again on yourself and you will not worry too much about making a perfect painting. And while you're much more relaxed and less pressurized, you're actually more able to develop this, your skill. You'll become a better artist. But if you rigidly, that's not a word, <laughs> rigidly, <laughs> 
<laughs> rigidly sort of become very attached to it. it must look so amazing i have to follow these steps then you're actually not free to explore you're not free to learn more about processes and if you and you, and you won't you will also miss the journey i know it can be a bit of a cliche but it's true you will miss the journey of the creative process you're just too focused on the outcome so let go of the outcome and focus more on what is this color doing next to that color? Why is this paint reacting this way and not that way? And you'll become freer and uh, more able and open to exploring and therefore developing your skill more easily and quickly. Number three, numero uno, dos, tres. <laughs> okay, number three, important. Whenever you do feel sad and afraid, don't shy away from those feelings. They are valuable pointers that you that can let you know that something's up for you. So I'm a really big proponent, is that the word? Supporter of feeling your feelings. Sit with your feelings in a compassionate and empathic way. On Lifebook, we actually teach a self-empathy process that can be really helpful in these kinds of situations. Um, feeling your feelings and, and sort of following the feelings down, like I said, the rabbit hole will help you understand yourself better and may help you uncover, oh, okay, you know, reasons why you're so attached to an outcome, for instance. And then you, the more you understand yourself, the more you know why things are there for you, the more you're able to perhaps let go of it and move beyond the fear that you might be experiencing. Always validate your feelings and try to move away from judging yourself. Number four, cuatro. I don't know why I'm doing Spanish at the moment. Quite often, you might find that you are equating your creative skills with your worthiness. So for many people, being good at something also means that they are more lovable and more worthy or more acceptable. So this one goes deep, of, deep, of course, but it's a good idea to look at if this is going on for you. Because if that is the case and you, you, you only value yourself if you make a good painting then of course you're going to put again that massive pressure on yourself and you become very fearful of creating because if it's not good enough then you are not good enough and no one enjoys that feeling right so if you are if you're noticing that that's going on for you it's really important to remind yourself that your worthiness is unaffected entirely by if you can or can't make a great painting Try to remind yourself that ability and worthiness are utterly unrelated. You are worthy, good enough, and loved, needed, and whole, just as you are. Truly. Really, truly. Let's pause on this. You are good enough, loved, needed, and whole, just as you are. Very important. If you can or can't make a beautiful painting it has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with your absolute worthiness of love and acceptance. Your worthiness is unaffected by anything you are able to achieve in life. When you were born, your level of worthiness was at 100%. Throughout your life, no matter what happens, whatever you do or don't do, it never dips. It stays the same. Your worthiness stays the same. You're always good enough, okay? We'll always be like that. Try to really put that in your head <laughs> because this can be a major pressure if we think I'm only worthy and good enough if I can make a beautiful painting. Whoa, well, that entire experience becomes really stressful then, right? Numero five. If you have a strong inner critic with a loud negative inner voice, be aware that the inner critic often tries to protect you from sadness, disappointment, shame and discomfort and guilt perhaps as well. The best way to deal with her is by listening out for what might be under the judgments. And the answers are likely connected to what I've just mentioned. The inner critic is particularly upset by things like shame and feelings of unworthiness. So she'll do her best to get you not to engage in any behavior that might cause feelings of shame and unworthiness. So as I said before, if you're noticing that there is shame and unworthiness or feelings of not good enoughness connect to it, connected to it, again, to try to remind yourself that um, your worthiness is uncontestable and engaging in a creative practice is actually wonderful and healthy for you. And no matter how successful you are at it, you remain a wonderful, worthy, needed and beautiful human being. Number six. One way that can really help shift you out of fear and the inner critic is to make a conscious effort not to compare your work to other people's works. 
I know it's super tempting, but this is a recipe for disaster. I still do it. We're all guilty of it. Oh, that painting is nicer than my one. <laughs> I, I totally recognize it. John Acuff said, don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. You're being completely unfair on yourself if you compare your early works to the teacher's work who's been painting maybe for over 20 years or 10 years or five years. You are best off comparing your work to your own work from the past and marvel at the progress you made. If you are part of an online course, I even encourage you not to look too much at the Facebook group if, if you know that you can compare, you start to fall into the comparison rut. I mean, of course, unless it inspires you, but if you notice that you like to compare your work to other people's work and it makes you down, just maybe post your own work and don't, don't look too much at other people's work. It can really help with this stepping out of the comparison uh, um, habit that we can all fall into. Number seven, my favorite number. <laughs> Another thing to remember is that lessons on life work in particular are broken down into small steps. It can feel really overwhelming when you first see the final painting of a lesson all sparkly and shining in its beautiful finished form. One of the first thoughts that might come to your mind is, I can never do that when you see that beautiful finished piece. But that thought is only there because you haven't seen the process deconstructed. So you haven't seen all the bits. Seeing the steps broken down as you follow the lesson slowly, step by step, baby steps, can really help reduce anxiety. So when you follow the teacher's gentle instructions, the whole process can feel a lot less daunting and intimidating. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Yes, I do. Number eight. On Lifebook in particular, we help people work through all these scary issues. It comes with talks by me, like similar to this one actually, that address things like the inner critic, limiting beliefs, not liking your art, creative block, and procrastination. All these things are covered on Lifebook. So if you're feeling a little bit scared and unsure about joining Lifebook or embarking on a creative journey, any creative journey, I want you to know that you can work through these feelings, these worries, these anxieties, and that you can do art and eventually that you will eventually make art and paintings that you do like. It just requires a bit of courage and a lot of gentle self-kindness on the way. Okay, so I hope this talk was a little bit helpful, uh, just in general. And if you are also considering joining Lifebook, but you're not sure, hope this gave you a little bit of insight, a little bit more of a a feeling that maybe you can do this. And uh, thank you for listening to me today. I will try and do a few more of these um, videos. If you have any questions, do please email me and I can perhaps address them in a video like this. And if you have any other questions or worries, do email me on hello at willowing.org. And like I said, I'll try to answer them either in the video or perhaps by email. And anyone is, to anyone who's watching, I hope to see you obviously on Lifebook 2021. We are about to begin this. And uh, so we're four or five days away from the 1st of January, which is when we're going to start another round of Lifebook. Yay! Okay. So I hope to see you there. And if not, I hope this little video talk was helpful to you regardless. Much love. And I wish you the best, most sparkling and wonderful new year, new 2021. I'm going into it with a renewed sense of hope after this particularly challenging year and I send you just beaming blasts of abundance, love, joy, health, everything that you want, everything your heart desires your way for the new year. Much love, big hugs. Bye.